Now, I just finished making the quick little video on the dialogue from the movie Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond came out in the 21st century. By the mid-60s, another great film related to the diamond wars in, throughout black Africa that was set in Africa and actually filmed in Africa it was called Dark of the Sun. And here is another quote by black men, by a black character in the movie, which is play, played by running, great running back Jim Brown, who seems to feel like his, period, his people are inferior in one way or another. Curry is leading an operation to go south into Sim Simba territory to rescue diamonds that are in a vault there and the people who are in the town. Okay? Jim Brown plays Rufo, his partner. They're going down on the same operation. They also took along a guy they had to take along who was a captain in the Congolese army who was a really, really good fighter, but he was an ex-Nazi and he, he ran to the Congo to escape, I guess, the, you know, the, the Nuremberg witch trials or whatever. They just, they stopped the train to refuel and a couple little black kids, cute little black kids come out of the forest. So they give them food and set them on their way. But he, I think it's Heinrich, the guy who is the, the, the ex-Nazi, he, he walks after them. And when, they got, when he got into beyond sight of the people in the train, he mows them down with his machine gun. And he comes back and everybody's looking at him and goes, don't you know how the Simbas use these children to spy? I'm not going to take a chance on letting them go back and telling them where we are, where we're going, what the nature of my mission is. But the film suggests that it wasn't really what he shot them for, that he really shot them out of his own kind of um, sadistic Nazi German mode of operation or whatever. So... When the guy gets when the Nazi guy gets back to the train, he gets into an altercation with Curry, who could easily have kicked his ass, but he was stopped. And he took his head and put it under the front wheel of the train and yelled at the engineer who was in the cab and couldn't see to move forward two or three feet. I want to see something. And and Rufo, played by Jim Brown, comes running and knocks him out of there. Curry is played by Rod Taylor, and the the. The acting job that Rod Taylor and Jim Brown do as this, these close friends who often have to repress one another to do the right thing operate. Curry. So he's sitting in a car by himself, leaning over, feeling like shit. And Rufo comes in with soup for him. Curry, what are you doing? Playing Mother McCree? Rufo, you have to eat. Hope you like it lightly. I hope you like it highly seasoned, though. We hit a bump back there when I put the salt in. Curry, I'm not hungry. Rufo, come on, eat something. You didn't pull that trigger. Curry, wise guy, you know everything, don't you? Rufo, I know you. Curry, how come you don't hate whites? <laughs> and this, this is great acting by Jim Brown. He, he, Rufo comes back and says, man, because I'm good. I'm always good, mostly because my mama, she hit me over the head when I wasn't, until I was so tall she couldn't reach anymore. My mama, she was tattooed, big tribal tattoos, dawa, that's magic. Lots of dawa in my mama, my papa too. His teeth were filed when he was 12 years old. And when he laughs now, he puts his hand over his mouth because he's ashamed. But when the time came, he wouldn't let them file my teeth. Curry, you're still not getting to the point, are you? Rufo, I came, I come from a tribe that used to believe, a lot of them still believe, that if you eat the heart and brain of your enemy, his strength and wisdom will be added to your own. Primitive, savage tribal beliefs based on ignorance. Black Dawa, no different from Henlein's primitive, savage beliefs. 
His teeth were filed by his mama and papa, White Dawa. Curry, except Henline isn't ashamed when he laughs. Rufo, but you are. What do you say we settle for that? Curry, sometimes I get the feeling that you're the boss around here. Why is that? Rufo, because I know what I'm doing here. To you, this is just a big hunk of real estate called the Congo. To me, this is our Bunker Hill, our storming of the Winter Palace. I thought you knew. Curry, no, I didn't know. Not like that, not clear like that. You're kind of dangerous, aren't you? Rufo, I came down out of the trees by invitation and I'll kill anybody who tries to send me back up again. Russian, Chinese, English, Belgian, or United States. You take your pick. Curry, maybe you and I will have to fight one day. Ever think about that? Rufo, I hope not. I wouldn't like it. I'd do it, but I wouldn't like it. I'd have to think twice about how I hated living in the trees. Curry, well, hell, I'd probably go up with you if it came to that. Rufo, all right, Buana. Since you do, since you do, since you do that, let's eat your soup. Curry, he, he takes a spoonful. There's too much salt in it, and they both laugh. Great movie moment. Great quote. And it's also another take on the idea that black that non-white, non-European societies in the third world, especially black African ones, cannot govern themselves. Because this, ha this film was made in the mid-60s when the actual Congo War was actually going on. And we see what the Congo, that's 1966, and we see what the Congo has been ever since. It's just like, you know, a failed state, high in the fragile index of states. What can you say? There's a question underlying all of those historical facts that people are afraid not only to answer, but even to allow to be asked in the first place.